Good morning guys, welcome to today's video. Today we are experiencing, today we are experiencing uh, unexpected turn of events. So you guys know I've been uh, nursing a uh, baby chick. It's about five weeks old and it came down with Rye Neck. Rye Neck is basically an inherited disorder where it can prevent a chicken, usually a chick, but sometimes a chicken, from being able to absorb the nutrients that it needs from food. So we brought her in, we've been treating her with vitamins and vitamin E specifically. And we are, uh, we noticed her on Saturday by last night, which was Wednesday. So Saturday, oh. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, in four days, she started to become so much better. And today's the fifth day and she's doing so much better. Uh, I'll show you and then I'll tell you what the unfortunate um, events are. So this is what Rye Neck looks like, and this is why she can't go back with her flock yet. Sometimes she falls over and then she can't get back up. But, <laughs> hold on. Every time I want to video something, it just goes wrong. Okay, here, let's straighten out. Get yourself situated. There we go. So uh, this little chicken who has been in our little hospital has bonded herself to me in incredible measures. So essentially, um, I'm gonna build this little hospital. She climbed out of the box. I had her in a box, she flew out of the box. And she's able to walk around, she's able to eat on her own, she's able to drink on her own. So she's doing so much better, but sometimes she falls over. And when she does, her neck, she has a hard time getting her neck up <laughs> and getting herself straightened so that she can be a regular chicken. Anyway, she's still in recovery. She's not ready to go back with her flock because if she fell over and she couldn't get up, they would just trample her and it would be bad for her. So she's still in our hospital. The crazy turn of events is that she has bonded herself to me in astronomical ways. I had no idea it was happening. I had no idea it was gonna happen. It's insane. The dogs are loving her and she's so used to the dogs that she doesn't even mind them, which is so good. I'm so glad she got was able to get used to the dogs because if she's going to be in the house for any length of time, then she's going to have to be able to manage the dogs and not be bothered by them. Daisy's scared of Daisy, chickens. Yeah, Daisy will be scared. This morning I had to give her a bath. I said, if you're going to be my best friend then you're going to have to not be stinky. So I gave her a bath and I blew her dry with the hair dryer. She loved the hair dryer. But anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that she's doing so much better. You can see that her neck is still a little bit crooked and that she, but that she's recovering. All it takes is a little bit of vitamin E specifically and a little bit of care to make sure she gets the food and water she needs while she's waiting for the vitamins to kick in and to recover. But anyway, that's her. <laughs> She comes over to me, she climbs on me, she stands on my feet until I pick her up, and then when I pick her up, she snuggles into me like I'm her long lost mama. I've never seen anything like it. I thought she would just continue to be scared the whole time, but she's just adapted. She's just the best, cutest little thing. She's just adapted, and has chosen me to be her best friend. This is my chicken. So, this is Sophie's favorite chicken. It's a silky. And it's probably going to be a partridge color. Uh, you can tell a partridge because they usually have spots on their heads. And then they have this fancy little stripe down their back. You could tell more when she was younger. That chicken was mostly white when it was a baby. Yeah. So, was was this our first chicken born in mm. this in this flock? I don't think so. She's be like, nice, hmm, baby. Yeah, be nice. She's not scared of anything. No. Ellie. So, we don't want to have a house chicken. Like, I don't, I want her to be able to go back into her flock as soon as possible because I, I think living with other chickens is her best chance of survival and her best chance of happiness. But for now, she just has to be in here. <laughs> but she's, she's, oops. <laughs> she's getting, Ellie. help her up. Help her up. Here, go back on the blanket. Okay, there we go. You're falling. I got her situated. She just needs a little bit of help to right herself and then she's good for a long time again. I'm surprised Daisy hasn't grabbed it and taken it to her cage. <laughs> oh, look, she's gonna get a dog toy. 
just attach my toy. But she's totally comfortable being around the dogs, being around the people. I'm so glad that I left her in her little box and left her down low when we were in the room with her so that she could learn to feel comfortable with the dogs and get used to them. And it's good for our dogs to be able to get used to chickens. I fed her a worm. Too. It's unfortunate though. We would never have chosen this. We would never have chosen to have her have a health crisis and have to be in our little chicken hospital. We fed her a worm today. Yeah, Sophie fed her a worm today. So this little girl's five weeks old. And this little girl is one week old. Oh, no. Dang it. She pooped on you. Put her back. <laughs> you know that TikTok where it says, this is what kids do when they're not attached to a screen all day? Well, this or is sit on a swing. And this is what Sophie does. So she printed out some bookmarks. I think she should color them. What are these? Uh, they're sushi. Sushi. Gabby uh, wanted since so I printed some for her. Right, so now she wants to... Why is it upside down? Oh, that makes more sense. <laughs> so now she wants to laminate them. I was them. so confused. I was like, what? And luckily we have a laminator and we have like so much stuff that goes with it. But I love when she gets Do super creative. Like that? Um, look, it says, yes. Insert sealed end of pouch first. Look how smart I am. This is a person who can't even find the thing. So you have to wait for a few minutes until it heats up. So then this light will turn green when it's ready. Okay. You literally never know what when something that you enjoy doing turns into something more. And I keep on saying this all the time. Like you see all those things going around that say like spending all of your life doing things that you don't enjoy so that you can pay to do more things that you don't enjoy. It's such a waste of time, but learning to figure out what you love and then making that into your job. I'm so excited because it's like the whole mystery of life, you guys. It's the mystery of life, doing what you love and making it work for you. And then it takes on a whole life of its own. But anyway, I'm so excited because I'm going to have a whole bookmark collection. Because you need more collections. Yes, I do. Okay, so let's show them some of these things. So I love them. I love that she's just being interested in doing them. But look at this. Those ones. These ones are so super cute. That's like a cow with glasses. This is a fish one. This is a fish one. I love my books. So I told her she should color them. She wants some of them not colored, which I understand. But look at how cute these are. Yeah, these are definitely too big. But look at how cute they are. Absolutely adorable. Colored and made smaller, they would be the best bookmarks for like a little kid. So she has her fancy markers out and she's gonna color some of them, but I love the sushi. Sushi's cool. Even I would get into this because I love laminating. Who I couldn't love find laminating? the laminating thing. But I would love it, except for that I read on my phone, so I don't have any books. I have so many books. Yeah, you need to get a shelf like Gabby got. You need a shelf in yeah, your room. Yeah, I have a little drawer bucket thing, but I keep forgetting that my books are there. So I brought down all my books I need to read. Oh, so we bought you a new book yesterday, but you already had a bunch of books that you had to read? Well, I started reading a bunch. But I don't have bookmarks, so now I have bookmarks. Because I hate folding the edge of the paper. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't look good. All right, so Nick is here. You guys haven't seen Nick in a long time. But anyway, we're going to see if he is a better <laughs> axe thrower than Sophie. Ellie, you better get over here because... He will be? Why do you think that? Because I suck at throwing it. No, have no. faith in yourself, Sophie. They don't like Ellie. Where are you supposed to stand? Yeah, right on the edge of the grass there. Come here, Ellie. Nope. Nope. <laughs> do they even go in there? All right, Sophie's turn. My turn. Yes. I yeah, our kids have gotten it before. Looks like I can make this better. There? All right, try number two. Nope. Woo! You got one. It's my turn. My. Wow, did you see that? Oh, Shut up, Nick. Can you go get my little hat? Shut up, Nick. I'm bad at this. I already know. Nope. Because you told yourself you're bad. Makes you, makes you do badly. Oh, those. Did you get more? I don't see it. I didn't put it on yet. Oh, where are you going now? 
to go put them on. Oh, can I come with you? Yeah, we gotta carry a dog. Yeah, well, can I drive with you? Like, can I yeah, just stand, on, stand on there? All right, Ellie! I wanna do it all with you by my side. If you're in, meet me here tonight. Be brave and come along. I'll be your right. Promise we don't need no brake lights. We can travel the world, so just say yes. Choose to do whatever comes next. Okay, you guys, we are screwed, for lack of a better word. We're screwed because... Because it's all full of water. It's like swamp. It's swampy in there. The well is over there, so all the water goes here. Let's go in there. All right, so it's dry here. It's only a little bit wet. And then it's dry back there. All right, it's like, it's like dry. But then it's wet back here. Would you guys build a paddock in a swampy area? It's it's pretty dry, Sam. Drier than any other year, I feel like. And then it's wet again over here. I don't know. I don't think we're gonna be able to do it. Because this strip here is the only part that's... But so my, what I was thinking was that like, Ellie, come on, come on. What I was thinking is that like, we could let the horses, like the ponies eat grass out here, keep the big horses in the big field. It's so super annoying because we can't, I don't think we can make this pasture bigger because over there, we could put it out that way just a little tiny bit, but there's a tree and there's poles, all those poles we'd have to move. Tim said he would like to move it, move this fence line over because we could add like quite a bit of property here to make the paddock bigger. Like this, this would be perfect. Except for that there's three big trees. We need these trees because they give our paddock shelter or they give our paddock shade. They're the only things. But then there's this big trailer that the old owners left here and we can't even take it off because we can't get there, the trees grew up through this stupid thing. Like this thing has been here like a hundred years. So it's, which is so super annoying. Like to get this thing out, we've just like let it live here because to get it out, we would have to cut down all these trees. I just don't feel like God wants us to make this pasture bigger, bigger, at least in any way that is not going to be like massively time consuming. I love having this big field and I love having the, I love the fact that this is a big huge field and we use both. I think it's time to say the words you guys. The words are, we outgrew this property. We have totally outgrown it. I'm just going to throw the horses some hay. I don't know if I ever told you guys this story. But when we moved here, when we moved to this house, I did not want to move here. So when we moved here, it was all Sam. Sam found this farm and was like, we need to move here. And I was like, no, we're good boarding. I didn't want to move to a farm. I was happy living in the city. I was happy doing what we were doing and going to the barn and being part of like a barn. And I was happy doing that stuff. But Sam kept pushing. And it's usually me that wants to do stuff. It's never ever him. He pushed and pushed and pushed. And he was like, just come and look at it with me and just come and let's do this. And like, Eventually I caved and I could see us moving here and then oddly enough we moved here and then just a couple months after we moved here we weren't ready to bring the horses home. We had two horses and they were boarded out. We weren't ready like we wanted to take time to fix things and make it the way we wanted and then suddenly Stella foundered at the barn that we were at and it turned out that we needed to bring her home our, our vet said like do you ever want to ride this horse again you're, you're gonna have to take her home and so so quickly like we moved in in january and then i think she came home at the end of february and we ended up having to bring our horse home and then you guys know most of the rest of it but it was a god thing i feel like it was meant to be and we always knew that we were going to move from this house and this is not a we bought a new farm announcement <laughs> But 
I think this is our last summer here. I really believe that this is our last summer here. We've truly outgrown this farm and I love it. I have loved living here. I have loved living here better than any other place ever. And we've lived in the country before. Uh, this has been the most peaceful, life-fulfilling dream that I could ever have imagined. Like I never knew for sure if I was gonna love having horses, if I was gonna love like having to be down here every five seconds and, and like, giving them like night hay and coming down and doing night checks and, and I never ever dreamed a time where I would care, where I would stop caring about if we smelled like horses. And I don't know, it was a huge adjustment and we did it and we moved here and it's been the best decision of our life. It is time for us to move, but rest assured the time that, that the day that we actually move from this place will be so bittersweet and so sad. And we will only move to a house that we never have to move again from, which is why it's taking us so long. Plus COVID jacked up all the prices. So I don't know why I'm feeling so sentimental, but my son was here for a little visit and we just got talking about like life and, and where we've lived and how much I love it here and how he never grew up on a farm. And it just made me realize like farm life is where it is at. Even though our horses all fit in there and I've seen horses fit in smaller spaces. I don't want that for our horses. I want them to have a big space. And when Sophie's horse comes here, come on. When Sophie's horse comes here, actually comes here soon. Um, I know that him and Chino can go out here and Penny even and they'll be okay but I want to preserve like as much of our own hay as possible so that we can cut hay this year so I don't know I do not know all the answers you guys sometimes it feels easier to concentrate on all the things you want to change and not see all the things that are amazing don't you know that you're beautiful?